In this lecture, you'll learn about the NetApp Data Fabric, which is NetApp's vision or strategy to integrate all of their storage platforms across their portfolio with each other and also across cloud services. The point of the NetApp Data Fabric is so that data can be seamlessly stored and moved between different platforms in the NetApp portfolio and across cloud services as well in order to meet capacity, performance and data protection needs. The idea is to achieve greater integration across diverse storage and get away from storage silos and locking. This has been identified as a problem with a lot of older legacy storage systems is that they're really standalone systems and they don't integrate with anything else. So when they get older and you want to be able to move data off of those systems, it's very difficult. NetApp have recognized that. They've also recognized the huge emergence of cloud services as well. And it's really important nowadays that people, companies are able to move their data where it's needed and when it's needed there. So the goals of the data fabric are mobility is the big one, also simplicity, automation, visibility of the data and security as well. The simplified mobility makes it easier to provision backup and disaster recovery across different platforms and to place data on the most suitable storage platform and media as it moves through its life cycle. As data gets older, typically it can be moved to lower performance storage. It's traditionally been normally easy to do that within the same storage platform, but not between different storage platforms. So NetApp are working on fixing that now. So the data mobility use cases you can move data across those platforms and across cloud providers as well. So that makes it a lot easier for backup and archive, for disaster recovery, for storage tiering and lifecycle management, migrating to the cloud and running analytics services in the cloud as well, or taking the data back the other way and doing data center consolidation. So obviously all of these things, you want to have mobility because these all require you to move your data around. For your backup and archive and disaster recovery, you want your data to be in an offsite location. And with the NetApp Data Fabric, it doesn't have to be the same type of platform that you're moving it to. It can be an entirely different model of storage. Also storage tiering and lifecycle management. Again, you're moving the data around migrating to the cloud or migrating back on premises again it's moving your data and the idea of the data fabric is that we want this to be as flexible as possible so let's look at some of the tools and features that are available from netapp that help enable this first one is the snap mirror engine which you're going to be learning about in heaps of detail later on in this course to just give you a quick overview of it now it's an integrated feature on ONTAP and also on the Element OS systems, that's SolidFire and NetApp HCI. With the SnapMirror engine, there's two parts to that. There's the SnapMirror feature, which is used for disaster recovery, typically, and there's also SnapVault, which is a backup feature. SnapMirror engine has been available for a long time on ONTAP systems, it's also been ported over to those Element OS systems now as well. So with SnapMirror, data can be replicated between all the different ONTAP platforms. That's the FAS, the AFF, ONTAP Select, Virtual Machines, and also Cloud Volumes ONTAP. There's no restrictions on moving data between any of those different platforms. Data can be replicated from SolidFire and NetApp HCI to any ONTAP platform. Right now, you can't replicate from ONTAP back in the other direction. I expect that that will be available in a, in a future release though. Data can also be replicated to Cloud Backup, which was formerly known as AltaVault. I'll be telling you more about AltaVault later on in this lecture. 
Next feature is Fabric Pool. So this is all the features that are available that help with moving your data around. Fabric Pool is an on-tap feature, so it works on all the different on-tap platforms, and it tiers cold data to object storage. So data that has not been read or written to recently. The hot data, that's the data that has been touched recently, stays on SSD drives on your on-tap system, and the cold data is tiered off to lower cost storage. That lower cost storage is going to be object storage on storage grade web scale, on Amazon S3, or on Azure Blob. When you do tier that data off, you can choose to just move your snapshots only, or it can be the snap mirror destination traffic only, or you can say that all data you want to be eligible to be tiered. So what you do is on that uh, on that system, you configure it as a thin provisioned volume. So the volume looks big, looks big to the client, but you actually only put your hot data on there. Um, after the data gets cold, then it's going to be moved off to that lower cost storage. So it means that you get better utilization on your SSD drives. It's more efficient. So on volumes where all data is eligible to be tiered, untouched blocks will be moved to object storage after 31 days by default. You don't have to be as conservative as that. You can set it to a shorter period if you want, or you can actually set it to a longer period as well. When blocks are read later, so whenever you've got any blocks that have been tiered off to the object storage, if you need, if a client wants to read or write to them later, then the blocks will be pulled back and marked as hot again. Metadata remains local, so Fabric Pool is a tiering solution. It's not a backup. Even for that cold data that's been moved off, the metadata about it still stays on the SSDs. So don't think, well, I can lose my SSDs and I can still get that data. It doesn't work like that. What Fabric Pool does is a tiering solution. It allows you to get more efficiency, better cost effectiveness out of your SSD drives, but you still need a backup in place as well. Next one is Cloud Backup, which was formerly known as AltaVault. This backs up data to object storage on public or private cloud. The cloud backup device, so this is either a hardware or a virtual machine, I'll give you some more detail on that in a second, sits between a backup server and the cloud. Snap mirror to cloud backup is also supported as well. I'll show you a diagram of this in a second, which will make that make more sense. The cloud backup device also has its own storage space. So it's got disks there as well. All backups are sent to the cloud. Recent backups are also stored on the device. This means that the majority of the stores can be completed quickly on site without incurring cloud bandwidth costs. So your cloud backup device stays in the same site as the storage that you're backing up then what happens is the, the backups go to the cloud backup device. It performs deduplication and compression and sends them off to the object storage. By doing the deduplication and compression, your backups take up less space, so you get cost savings there. The most recent backups are also cached on the device as well. So say that you're moving those backups off to public cloud, when you do a restore, you don't always want to be having to pull the data back from public cloud again, because that will be slow and expensive. When you do do restores, most often it's going to be somebody's done an accidental deletion or an accidental change, something like that. So normally when you do a restore, it is going to be recent data, and that recent data is stored on the cloud backup device, which is on-premises, so you don't have to pull the data back from the public cloud. It can be done quickly and at no cost. So as I mentioned, the cloud backup is installed as a device. It's either a physical appliance or a virtual machine, which runs on KVM, Hyper-V, or VMware, or you can run it as a cloud instance in AWS or Azure. I mentioned earlier it performs inline deduplication and compression, so you get the cost savings there. It also does data encryption before it sends the, the backups off to the cloud, so you've got the security there. 
and Cloud Backup or Altivault evolved from the acquisition of Riverbed Steel Store in 2014. Riverbed are best known as a compression company. They specialize in network compression and they're very, very good at it. So with the Cloud Backup device, you do get very good compression there, very good cost savings. Let's look at the use cases of Cloud Backup. So we can use this for backup to private or public cloud. You can back up to your own object store or you can back up to pretty much any of the cloud providers. I'll also show you in a second where you can back up from and to. It's pretty much any backup solution and snap mirror, and it's pretty much any cloud provider, either private or public cloud. So backup obviously goes hand in hand. It also gives you the disaster recovery as well. You can use cloud backup to private cloud and then from private cloud to public cloud for tertiary backup. It's recommended to have three copies of your data. So you, cloud backup can help with this where you can have the, the primary data on your storage system and then the secondary data is cached on the cloud backup device. Uh, also, it can be in your own private object store on site as well. And you can also back up off site to public cloud. Other use cases, a cloud DR site. So the disaster recovery site, that can either be your own disaster recovery site in your own building off site, or you can do disaster recovery in the cloud. If you do lose your primary data center, you have a flood there or something like that, what you can do is you can spin up an AWS or Azure instance of cloud backup and then you've also got your actual backups in the cloud that allows you to then spin up actual compute and get back working again. And the last use case here, it also supports migration from one cloud provider to another. Okay, so let's have a look at the cloud backup in a bit more detail. So this is from the data sheet, which you can get from the NetApp website. And you can see over here on the left that it supports data coming in from Snapmirror on an ONTAP system or Element OS and also all of these different backup solutions. So pretty much all of the well-known backup solutions in the market will work with it. The, data, the backup then gets sent to your Altivault appliance, either a physical appliance or running in software. Both of them do have the, the cache storage on there as well. And then from there, it gets sent out to the object storage, either public cloud like Amazon or Azure or all these other public cloud providers or to your own private cloud like NetApp storage grid web scale. Okay. And another thing that I wanted to show you about the cloud backup is the different platforms that it can run on. So this is from a NetApp Insight presentation. You can see that you can run it as an instance in the cloud, or you can run it as a virtual machine, or you can run it as a physical appliance. Obviously, with the physical appliance, you're going to have more capacity there. So really, the, the difference is, is just how much capacity is available. And you can see on the slide here how much is the local capacity that it can cache on the device and how much data is supported to be transported off to the private or the public cloud. Okay, so that was cloud backup, which can really help with your data mobility with your backups. Back to the slides again. So you saw the, the cloud backup, different things you can run it on just there. Okay, next thing is CloudSync. CloudSync allows you to synchronize data between SIFs, NFS, object storage, and cloud storage. Network broker software runs on premises or in the cloud and manages the sync relationships. So CloudSync, it's not like the cloud backup, which is specifically for backups and caches a local copy of your recent backups as well. CloudSync is a more basic service. It's really just used for moving your data around. After the initial copy or the initial sync, the service will then sync any changed data every 24 hours. So you can use this for copying data from one location to another, and it can also keep them in sync afterwards as well. So let's have a look at the different options with Cloud Sync. So I've got that on my other tab here. So you can see that there's a load of different options here from 
Elastic File Storage on Amazon. You can go to AWS S3 or an NFS server. From S3, you can go to an NFS or Swift server to another Amazon S3 bucket. Could be in another location, Amazon EFS, etc. Azure is also supported. IBM is supported. Google is supported as well. So pretty much any NFS, Swift server can migrate to or from public cloud using the Cloud Sync service. Okay, back on to the slides again. So use cases for that. Data migration to the cloud that will then help you run analytic services like AWS Lambda in the cloud if you want to. You can use this for tech refresh. If you're upgrading your hardware, it can help with that by moving the data around. Also, rather than sending data to the cloud, you can also use it to pull it back the other way for data center consolidation. Okay, so that was all of the different features that help with our data mobility that build the NetApp data fabric. Here, just at the end here, I'm going to give you a summary of all the different mobility options. Now, this is something that NetApp are working really hard on right now. So this list for sure is going to be updated over the coming months. But right now, as I record this, this is what's available right now. So from any ONTAP platform, you can snap mirror to any other ONTAP platform. So that's bi-directional. From SolidFire and NetApp HCI, you can snap mirror to ONTAP. Right now, that is just one way. You can't snap mirror from ONTAP back to SolidFire or NetApp HCI right now. I'm sure that will be available in the future. From any ONTAP platform, you can fabric pool to storage grid, AWS S3 and Azure Blob. That is called data tiering. So your, your hot blocks stay on the local SSDs. The cold blocks get tiered off to that lower cost object storage. You can pull it back when it's needed. Next one, S3 or OpenStack Swift APIs can be used to send objects to storage grid, which is on private cloud. We covered that earlier in this section. From there, you can also optionally send the data off to the objects off to Amazon S3 and Azure Blob. And that is bi-directional. The data can move in both directions. Also from an NFS or SIFT client, you can use the NAS bridge to send traffic to storage grid and then optionally onto S3 and Azure again. More than one page. Also any ONTAP platform can snap mirror to Cloud Backup, which used to be known as AltaVault, which can then send the data to most private or public cloud object storage after it has done the deduplication and the compression. And if you do lose your primary site, you can restore to a different DR site or you can restore back to the primary and you can do your, your file level restores there as well. Most backup software can do the same thing as well. So for sending data to Cloud Backup, it can either be from SnapMirror or it can be from most backup software. Next one is SolidFire and NetApp HCI can do a backup using S3 or OpenStack Swift APIs, and that can be sent to most private or public cloud object storage. Again, you can restore that back to the same or a, or a different DR site. The E and the EF series platforms can use the Centricity Cloud Connector on Linux to also do backups to Storage Grid and AWS S3. And the last page, so we've got yet more features that can be used for data mobility. Cloud Sync can sync data between SIFs, NFS, and private or public cloud object storage. The Flex Array feature on ONTAP allows FAS and AFF systems to use capacity on EMC, HP, Hitachi, IBM, and NetApp E-Series storage arrays. And Snap Center software, this is the one that we haven't covered yet, but I will be talking about this later in the course. That provides centralized single pane of glass management for backup and recovery. Okay, so hopefully I didn't miss any there. I just wanted to give you a summary at the end so you can see all the options that are currently available. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands on practice with NetApp Storage for free on your laptop, then you can download my free ebook which you can see above my head right now. Also check out my NetApp Storage Complete course, which will teach you everything you could possibly want to know about ONTAP. Thanks.